Hi guys, and welcome to another in the video series on HSC Chemistry and the Industrial Chemistry option. In this video, we're going to focus on ways of maximizing the yield of sulfuric acid. We've previously looked at the processes involved in um, the production of sulfuric acid, and we've identified that sulfuric acid is a multi step process. We need to form sulfur dioxide as a primary product. Sometimes that will come from sulfur uh, obtained through the fresh process. Then we need to go to sulfur trioxide and then we need to go to sulfuric acid. Along the way we have a very important equilibrium reaction and we also sometimes have an intermediate, the uh, oleum. Of all of these steps though, one of those one of these is quite critical because the step that takes us from sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide is an equilibrium. And because it's an equilibrium, we can use our understanding of Le Chatelier's principle to um, manipulate the conditions in a safe and cost-effective way to maximize our yield. So industrially the whole purpose is always to make sure that we're producing the greatest yield. In the same sort of way as we discussed maximizing the yield in the Haber process, we do the same thing here for the production of sulfuric acid. So we need to monitor the reactant conditions and we need to ensure that we're keeping an eye on things like temperature and pressure and also the concentration of both the products and the reactants and also potentially the use of a catalyst. So the specific reaction that we're after is this one right here. So you can see a couple of things straight away. Firstly, it's an exothermic in the forward direction, exothermic reaction in the forward direction, and therefore it releases um, heat energy. But also in terms of the number of gaseous molecules, we have two plus one, which is three on the reactant side and just two on the product side. So the first thing we know that is that if it's exothermic, then the forward direction is favored by lower temperatures. Okay, lower temperatures will favor the exothermic reaction and therefore increase the yield. But the problem with low temperatures is they also affect reaction rates. And as a consequence, most um, industrial reactions that are exothermic in the forward direction usually have to um, have a catalyst involved in order to overcome that uh, issue of uh, lower temperature um, favoring the forward direction and increasing the yield but decreasing the overall reaction rate. So the catalyst will counter that by increasing the rate of the reaction at those lower temperatures. Now unlike the Haber process, the difference between the number of gas molecules of reactants um, to products is not quite as high. In fact this time the ratio comes out at just 3 to 2. Now whilst that favors um, the forward direction when we increase the pressure, so higher pressures, it doesn't do it to quite the same extent as something like the Haber process, where you have a 4 to 2 ratio, therefore twice as many uh, reactant molecules as you have products. So this means that some of those issues associated with increasing pressure, such as cost and also concerns regarding uh, the safety of workers and I guess of the equipment as well, means that higher pressure may not be given quite as large a weighting when the ratio is 3 to 2 as perhaps when the ratio is 4 to 2 for something like Haber. So 3 to 2 for contact and 4 to 2 for Haber. So these are some of the reasons why conditions need to be monitored in um, industrial processes to make sure that we are keeping an eye on costs, keeping an eye on safety but also trying to maximize yield and hence maximize profit. Now the other thing that we can do is we can think about the um, concentrations themselves. Is there any way we can remove the products of this reaction? Well, there is only one product and it's sulfur trioxide. And if we can remove this product, um, then that will uh, decrease its concentration and therefore encourage the reaction through Le Chatelier's principle to shift towards the right and replace that lost sulfur trioxide and hence increase our yields. It's possible also for our reactants to be used in excess and in this case the oxygen is probably the easiest thing 
um, to add more of to our reactant vessel. And as we increase the concentration of the oxygen, Le Chatelier's principle suggests that the uh, system will shift in order to counter that change. And hence, we will have, um, again, a shift to the right and an increase in the yield. So when we're looking at the contact process, um, we can either re uh, remove some of the sulfur trioxide product in order to shift to the right and increase the yield, or we can add excess oxygen, increase that oxygen concentration. And again, uh, Lucia Tellier's principle says that will be shifted to the right. Moderate temperatures then are important. Um, moderately high um, pressures, um, not quite too high because all of that extra benefit isn't quite um, as meaningful as it is when the ratios are higher. Um, and the addition of excess oxygen uh, also helps us along with the addition of a catalyst. So the important thing with this is to think about how you're explaining your answers to the Haber process and use a similar kind of logic when you're dealing with the contact process and maximizing the yield of sulfuric acid uh, production. Thanks for watching.